everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and I will be hanging out with you today as we are still talking about the living world. Topic for the day is going to be the hypothalamus and pituitary gland. So let me go ahead and get you your objectives and then we'll get going. So by the end of this video there are three things that I need you to know or be able to do. The first one is to discuss the role of the hypothalamus in the endocrine system. Second, understand the differences between the posterior and anterior pituitary glands. And finally, explain thyroid regulation pathway. So that's what we're doing. Let's go ahead and start talking about it, starting with the hypothalamus itself. Um, we're going to call it integration central today. As far as where it is located, if you look up in this brain that has been cut in half, it is right there. Pituitary gland, which we're going to be talking about quite a bit today, hangs off of it basic function of the hypothalamus is the hypothalamus receives cells from the or cells receives signals from the nervous system so signals will come in they'll get processed in the brain or they will go directly to the hypothalamus the hypothalamus then works on the endocrine system through the secretion of hormones or stimulation of the pituitary gland or something like that so the hypothalamus is the point in our body that integrates our nervous system with an endocrine response and most of that regulation actually happens through the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus does secrete some stuff directly into the bloodstream, but most things are done using the pituitary, which is an extension of the hypothalamus. Uh, the pituitary gland has got a distinct posterior and anterior section. I'm going to talk about each one individually in a moment. Uh, a couple other things to know about the pituitary is that it has got... Um, neurons hooked to it, so those would be nervous cells that actually synthesize and secrete uh, neurosecretory hormones into the posterior pituitary. So this would be that integration point where these would be nervous cells that receive a nervous signal, but then they secrete um, things that stimulate the pituitary to actually uh, jump into action. Obviously, there's also a bunch of capillaries wrapped around the pituitary that the hormones are going to be dumped into that are going to work on other cells within the body. So let's take a minute and talk about the two halves of the pituitary. Um, they are very distinct from each other and they act differently. And we're going to actually stick with the same diagram. So talking about the posterior pituitary first, that would be this half of the cell right here, or the cell of the gland. Um, it is an extension of the hypothalamus, so it comes right off of it. It has neurosecretory cells, which you can see are these green cells that come in from the hypothalamus and kind of run into the posterior pituitary. And what these guys do is they receive signals from the nervous system, and there are two major hormones that they secrete into the uh, posterior pituitary, and then you can see they're kind of wrapped around the capillary beds here. Those hormones are then going to go out to the rest of the body. Um, there is oxytocin and ADH. Oxytocin is responsible for lactation in females, some sexual behavior, uh, some growth and development stuff. It's a pretty important hormone. And then there's ADH, which is antidiuretic hormone, which is very responsible for regulation of blood pressure, um, osmolarity of the blood, so how much fluids are in the blood, the amount of water that we excrete. So it's going to be really big if you are part of the excretory system. So those are the two major hormones that are associated with the posterior pituitary. I'm sure that there are probably more, but those are the major ones you need to know about. And also posterior to pituitary, know that it does receive signals directly from the nervous system, which is different from the anterior pituitary. Uh, if you look over at our diagram here, the anterior pituitary on the front doesn't have any of these neurosecretory cells hooked to it. If you follow those, they go to the posterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary doesn't have that. Um, it is controlled by inhibiting and releasing hormones from the hypothalamus. So the anterior pituitary is capable of producing and sending out tons of different hormones that work on all different parts of the body. Whether that anterior pituitary releases or doesn't release a hormone is up to the hypothalamus. And what the hypothalamus does is it will secrete, let's say, a releasing hormone. If the hypothalamus uh, secretes a releasing hormone, then whatever hormone that's associated with in the anterior pituitary will be released into the bloodstream. So let's say, and I'm just pulling this off the top of my head, it may not be accurate, so I'm saying that, but let's say that there's like a thyroid releasing hormone. So the hypothalamus would send out that hormone to the anterior pituitary, then the anterior pituitary would send out a hormone that works on the thyroid gland to actually stimulate it into an action. If the hypothalamus was to send out an inhibiting hormone, 
then it would cause the anterior pituitary to hold off the secretion of anything that would cause action in the body. So hypothalamus basically tells the anterior pituitary, send this hormone, don't send that hormone, and the hypothalamus does that by sending hormones itself. Now, in this idea of control within the endocrine system, it's all based on hormone cascades, which if you think back to when we were talking about signal transduction within a cell, this is kind of like a very big version of that. But instead of like one molecule working on the next, working on the next, we've got chemicals passing messages from one organ to the next to the next. So a general hormone cascade looks something like this. It goes from the brain, so a signal goes into the brain. Once the signal's into the brain, it stimulates the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus then stimulates the anterior pituitary, which we just talked about. It will give it either an inhibiting or a releasing hormone. Once that anterior pituitary has been stimulated, it will then send a hormone signal out to the target tissue, whatever the target tissue may be. It might be the adrenal glands, might be the testes, might be the thyroid, whatever. But there's this general pathway that goes from the brain, hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, then to the target tissue, and that's how most of the hormone signaling is going to end up getting done within the body. Speaking of one specific example of this, thyroid gland, which is right here in your neck, wraps around your trachea, is a pretty important uh, endocrine gland. It does a lot of things, controls metabolism, temperature regulation, uh, some growth stuff, your general level of activity. There's a lot that goes along with it. I want to talk very quickly about... Um, how it controls temperature. So basically what you get is a cascade. So the cold works on the body. That cold ends up stimulating the hypothalamus saying, hey, it's too cold, we need to speed up metabolism. Once the hypothalamus has been stimulated, it sends out a hormone signal to the anterior pituitary. And the anterior pituitary sends out a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH. When that TSH gets to the thyroid, it causes the thyroid to secrete further hormones that result in increased metabolism. So body's metabolism rate goes up, you produce more heat, and then it works like a feedback loop. Um, it's the actually the TSH that shuts down the process. It's not the warming up of the body. So once enough TSH has collected in the thyroid gland, that shuts down the pathway. Body's now at comfortable temperature. Everybody's happy, and we're good to go. Problem with the thyroid gland is it is prone to disorders. There are several of them. Just two I want to focus on real quick hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. If you remember like your word roots and stems and things like that, you'll remember that hypo means under, hyper means above. So if you have hypothyroidism, your thyroid is not functioning at full capacity. It's not receiving enough hormones, causing it to give off enough TSH or to give off whatever um, it's going to give off. So you have low thyroid activity. Uh, results of hypothyroidism are usually weight gain because your metabolism is lower, lethargy, you could be cold because your metabolism is not running high, so just a general feeling of tiredness and being run down, things like that. On the other end of things, you got hyperthyroidism where the thyroid is being overstimulated, which leads to a really quick metabolism, uh, which is going to lead to weight loss. You could be hot, you could be irritable, probably high blood pressure because your circulatory system is working in overdrive. So these are two opposite ends of the spectrum, but both are the result of some sort of disorder within the thyroid gland. And finally, this is kind of related, kind of not related. It's a little outlier you need to know about. You need to know the difference between a tropic and a non-tropic hormone, and it's very, very uh, easy. A tropic hormone acts on another endocrine gland. So an example of a tropic hormone would be thyroid stimulating hormone because it's a hormone that goes from the pituitary and then it stimulates another endocrine gland, the thyroid gland. If you're a non-tropic hormone, you work on something else within the body. You send a signal, you work on a cell, you cause some sort of change, but you're not controlling the function of an endocrine gland. I guess it should be stated that way. In that a tropic hormone actually controls the function of another endocrine gland. There's another example on the picture here. Uh, you've got the hypothalamus connected to the posterior pituitary, which is giving off corticotropin, which is going to control the function of the adrenal gland. So that would be an example of a trophic, tropic hormone. Uh, like I said, or maybe I didn't say. Either way, 
This wasn't meant to be an in-depth investigation into all of the ins and outs of the hypothalamus and the pituitary and all of the hundreds of hormones that are associated with it. I'm just going for the basic concept of how the hypothalamus integrates the nervous system and the endocrine system using the pituitary gland. So I hope that you at least got that out of it. Um, thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. Hopefully we'll see you again.